So let's let's do let's get to some actual awards. The first category is commerce, and according to my completely spontaneous um, uh, opinion here, commerce refers to online sites that sell products and services. Uh, specific web shops or commerce as part of a more comprehensive online environment may both be submitted. I think this is actually reasonably interesting to know because these are the notes that we got on the jury as well. So you know that was uh, helped direct me in some cases when I was thinking about this. Who would like to teach me how to say this word? Surfboatschap. <laughs> and that is. Okay, cool. So <laughs> the Surfboatschap <laughs> is an online supermarket for care. So my, my trick is that I speak German and Kölsch, right? So that I understand that that means like the, the care embassy, right? <laughs> no? Grocery store. Grocery. Boatschap is grocery store? Yep. yep. <laughs> it sounds just like, so who speaks German here? Right? It sounds <laughs> just like Botschaft, so I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah, that is. Okay. <laughs> In language learning, they call that a false friend. Right? So this place, this supermarket for carers, is the um, is answering the landscape of changing demands in long-term care, mental health, elderly, disabled people. And this was launched in March 2013, and it has been a huge success. Um, and the organization behind it, since launching the website, has gone from 30 to 150 employees. So first of all, yay Drupal for giving so many people jobs, right? That's making a real difference. Um, and hey, this is running on Drupal Commerce, awesome, and it sells more than 20,000 products. That is a pretty damn awesome Drupal site. And it was submitted by... Oh, <laughs> geez, I don't know. It's on the top. <laughs> no? <laughs> it was submitted by, I don't know. It really doesn't say. No? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's here. Look, from the, from oh, I apologize. Now I understand. Yes. There we go. <laughs> it's the words on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, by so this, everything I said was submitted by Synetic. Very, very well done, Synetic people. <laughs> oh, and I think we're supposed to say this is the Benelux Splash Awards because in Tracto made markos.be, so this is a Belgian website. It is the online extension of a fashion shop in Antwerp, and it says this is the e this e-commerce platform is an ideal translation of a physical to an online store, and I was really fascinated by this model. Um, this place offers exclusive items, both online and in physical, in their physical shops, so they have to be able to track exactly individual pairs of shoes, individual bits of of all the things that they sell because it can be offered on the website and in the shop at the same time and as soon as it sells, everything has to be updated in real time. So there's a lot of ERP and, and other kinds of <coughs> data action going on and that sounds really exciting to me. Um, so, and this was says splashing because, so nominated because, the website also runs on Drupal Commerce, includes a solar search engine, the data from the ERP system, um, Oh, and so, right, and <laughs> the data exchange between the ERP system tracking all the items and Drupal itself is done through the Migrate module. Thank you, Intracto, that's awesome. Is anybody from Intracto here? No, they said they didn't like our beers. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, I think that's awesome. And we'll just say that the Drupal 8 upgrade will just use the native REST interfaces, right? No more Migrate bullshit. <laughs> 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 But it's a great example of how um, you know we solve the problems with what we have, and we make really interesting, exciting things happen online and in the real world. The Philharmonie from Wunderkraut, Belgium. The Royal Flemish Philharmonic feels that classical music should be an amazing listening experience for everyone, trained and untrained ears. To make the joys of classical music more easily accessible, they asked the internet architects and Wunderkraut to design and implement a faster, user-friendly way to find concerts and events on thephilharmonie.be. And, of course, that was music to our ears. Ha, ha, ha. The presenter <laughs> notes were too big. Okay, no, I had to make the text smaller. Um, this was nominated because it's just a very nice site. And it supports a good culture cause at the same time. So, Wunderkart Belgium, well done. Thank you very much. Hot on 
on your heels, Wunderkraut Netherlands submitted um, Aktie Natur Monumenten, right? Roughly? <laughs> So this is the Wunderkart versus Wunderkart Smackdown in this category. This Naturmonumenten is a non-profit that wants to get more donations. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Um, and uses those donations to protect the environment. The site was built um, to help this by giving visitors tangible goals and uh, making the donation process compelling, clear, um, and easy. And so you can also do things like make a donation to save a specific animal in a specific area. Uh, this was nominated because it's a fully responsive template. It's got a background video um, when you load it on a big screen and there's a static image when it's loaded on a small screen. Um, it's highly search engine optimized to maximize traffic and the site was built in just one month. Thank you, Wunderkart Netherlands. Now I voted, but I actually have no idea who the winner is um, until I, oh. <laughs> oh, so now I know, but really it's just a ha, -ha. So, and the winner is Marcos. Woo! Woo! Right. <laughs> so they're, they're not here tonight, <laughs> but now I know who wrote my slide notes because it says, Intracto is not here, they stayed in Belgium, they don't like our Dutch beer. Who just said that, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> if, leave it for me to read from the... They okay. actually sent this to us. Oh, they did, really? <laughs> <laughs> they actually did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next year we'll host the Benelux Awards over there and we'll see what they come up with. Yeah, right? better beer. All right, because they better, they better, they better, you know. So, right, so this was the winning thing. Super, super cool data architecture. And I assume that then this lovely award will be given to them. Thrown in the canal <laughs> 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 because they insulted our beer. <laughs> education. Education category is education in the broadest sense. Any project uh, to which uh, education is a part of it uh, is central. So, so um, you know, whether schools or universities or paid training platforms, that's all part of education. The video channel University Utrecht by Van Eldijk is that right? Roughly? Yep. yep. Yes, yep. excellent. Um, was nominated. So this is super cool. Uh, they wrote, the Drupal solution we designed and developed, it builds a website. Oh, wait a minute. So this is really. Uh, <laughs> so the University of U Utrecht has a whole ton of videos out in the, on, on, on Vimeo and on YouTube, and some of them are official and some of them are unofficial, and there's course materials and sort of just thrown <coughs> out there. And Van Eldijk made this platform to go and collect them all and organize them and to be found in a single place to make them accessible, to surface them to the people that want to find them. Wherever they're posted, this platform gives you a central place to find them and, and their communities to benefit from them. So it's a super, um, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's a great educational tool. It's great for the community. And um, it has functionality uh, for if you find something online, you can let the site know and they'll be able to, they'll pull, be able to pull it in and call it as well. So, the Utrecht uh, University Video Channel, hooray! <laughs> so, Test Build by in Inuits. Yes, Inuits. Are there Eskimos in the house? <laughs> the Inuit? No? Is that funny? So. <laughs> so, Test Image was a site commissioned for the VIAA. I don't know what that is. With the aim of Oh, okay, so it must be the Flanders something, right? <laughs> because um, there's a, they're, they're building a Flemish archive, and so it's collecting audiovisual content to be made available for education in Flanders. And Testbuild wants teachers to have easy access to film and audio material from the, aha, from the Flemish public broadcaster, the regional broadcasters, and the heritage institutions, museums, archives, etc., to be used for education in Flanders. Um, technically, it was, uh, it was nominated because it's an interesting case, and uh, it's an integration between Drupal, Media, Mosa, and it is also a multi-site solution. Thank you, Inuits! <laughs> so the ROC 
Midden Nederland by Easy Company is, uh, so ROC Central Netherlands is one of the largest Dutch educational organizations. It has 24,000 students, 1,800 employees. They offer 412 courses at uh, 12 colleges. And each college has its own domain and a lot of overlapping content. So um, this was nominated because it provides a centralized architecture. You can create um, uh, any given content and then distribute it across all the various properties that the organization has. And they did that with unique node IDs, so UUIDs across all of the properties to, to help content sharing. Thank you, Easy Company. <laughs> Another Easy Company property, um, so right, that's the sort of Easy Company, Easy Company Smackdown. <coughs> the, um, so how do you say this place name? Nienrode. Oh, that's, that's kind of easy. So Nienrode Alumni Association, and I don't know what uh, VCV is, but it is, um, the alumni, okay, so it must be the Alumni Association of the Nienrode Business University. It's the largest and um, most cohesive, it says here, alumni group in the Netherlands. It was nominated because it's a social site that facilitates contact between alumni. The, um, there are forums on it, usage profiles that can be uh, associated with LinkedIn profiles, and the content <coughs> profile is automatically synced between them. Thank you again. Easy company. <laughs> and the winner is, and the winner is, hey, so is this the work that I didn't know at the beginning? Yes. Education? Oh, okay. Underwise. <laughs> yes! Awesome video channel at the University of Utah. But I guys, is anybody here? There's nobody here. But I assume that Van Eldek likes the beer just fine. <laughs> It's the first time. People, okay. people Do we have winners in the house? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you, you're the judge. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that from, from here on. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> we didn't put them in the beginning for. Uh, oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Anyway. <coughs> it's, it's, it is a super cool project. So. Um, hey. So the best <laughs> Drupal module published on Drupal.org. That is a super cool category because that gets back to community contribution and really the heart of what we like to do as open source geeks. So, Gold Gorilla submitted a module called the Validator. This module provides an advanced and flexible way for the developers to validate forms, entities, and fields. Using a simple system of hooks and user-defined constraints, everything in Drupal can be validated. It was created to overcome the vast number of form alters and custom validation functions. It was nominated because it helps cre create a clear Li uh, structure for defining your custom validation. It also helps reusing constraints across multiple forms and or entries. Go Gorilla! <laughs> Lennon Kuhn submitted IP <laughs> language. Must be negotiation. Somebody wrote a fun something funny here. <laughs> uh, the module uses the IP to country module for automatic country detection and then it adds a country language detection option at admin. <laughs> yeah, so there's this place <laughs> in the admin structure if you've used the multilingual sites in Drupal 7, which is kind of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> but you can configure the, the national languages and um, then it allows easy redirects in multilingual properties of users to their country's appropriate sites. And it was nominated because it adds new functionality to Drupal. Thank you, Zalonga. <laughs> Right, so who wants to tell me what a, a crumo is? Don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> the yellow thing you see down there. So the yellow thing? Yeah, if you have an array of stuff, yep. you can drill down and click on a specific item and see how to address it. And that's a crumo? Yeah. All right. Wow, this is cool. Today I learned what a crumo is. So um, the functionality is awesome, and especially now that I understand better. So. Search Crumo extends the Devel module. It makes it possible to search through the Crumos that Devel provides when you use, for example, a function like DPM. If you, if you rewrite that as SDPM, it will add the variable name or function you put into it. 
Um, so this way, if you copy the path using the get path button in Devel, you don't have to type anything anymore. Great for lazy programmers, it says right here. Um, and this was nominated because, and I'm quoting, search crumo is an epic improvement for Drupal Devel yes. output. Well done, go gorilla. <laughs> Purge, written by Mr. Squid. Paul, hey, so the purge module clears URLs from the reverse proxy, from reverse proxy caches like Varnish Squid or Nginx by issuing an HTTP, HTTP purge request to them. It works in conjunction with the cache expiration module to act on events that are likely to expire URLs from the proxy cache and interact with rules and rush. It was nominated because purge allows to deliver content updates faster to end users. Very cool, thank you, Paul. We had a tie in this category, so this well, is the only category with five nominations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, DOP submitted a module called Rate. I wasn't counting, nobody would have noticed that. Oh, okay. <laughs> DOP submitted a module called Rate, um, which allows administrators to add multiple widgets. By default, there are eight widgets types to choose from. Um, oh, well, okay, okay, okay. So rating, yes. Now I remember. So you got a thumbs up module, uh, a thumbs up widget. So hello Facebook, and then you have a thumbs up, thumbs down voting style. <laughs> you have a number up and down. You have five star. You have um, you can put emoticon ratings in. This makes me happy. This makes me sad. This makes me happy. This makes me um, rage quit. You have yes, no slider <laughs> and custom widgets and. The rate module was nominated because it's so awesome that 12,740 sites are currently reporting using this module. Thank you, DOP. <laughs> the winner is, the winner is, the winner is, The Rocky music to play. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. You just stay down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Can someone bring me a chair? <laughs> hey, so, um, Bert, Bert. Yes, I'm free. <laughs> okay, all right, so. It's the first time I get to do this. <laughs> Congratulations, Paul. Thank you, Jim. Oh. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> so, What made you, what, what were the circumstances that inspired this module? Uh, it was sort of born out of necessity. I was running uh, a Drupal site uh, 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 at a hosting provider where I worked. And there was a Varnish module, but I'm really, my security officer wouldn't allow direct communication between Drupal and Varnish. So I did the same trick over HTTP. And All right. sort of started it. But, uh, okay, and how is this benefiting people out in the trenches? Um, well, it's, it's a performance trick. You know, normally, if you want to gain performance, you increase your caching time, but that has a negative of delaying co new content updates uh, to visitors. So Purge is a fairly simple mechanism. To you just take things out of your cache and make sure that your newly updated uh, page is... Uh, awesome. So you get performance and new content updates quickly. That's the idea. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Paul. <laughs> Woo Translation, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Tools and applications. So, the 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 nice pair, the glowing pair, the what's goy? Koya, good one. Koya, oh koya, okay. The the nice pair, the good pair, koya pair by Limon Hun. Um, pair is an initiative to help households with a smart meter to use less energy in your home. It is, um, it says it's an initiative of nature and environment. I, maybe that's a ministry, a government department? Yes? So your client, it's a government department, thank you. 
um, and its partners, Anixis and Aliander. So um, this is super cool. Households who have this smart meter can log on to the hoiper.nl. <laughs> Come on, don't fuck that. <laughs> I'm trying. Do I have a German accent when I speak Dutch? Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, okay. So. <laughs> Um, so you can see on the website, you can see your gas and electricity consumption uh, live, and you can see, and if you have um, solar panels on your house, there's also a separate graph of how much energy you've been putting back into the grid. Um, and then the usage data is retrieved from a web service, and, use, and it, it has a lovely charts interface, um, and the dashboard, all of that stuff, that's all Drupal. And the users get, um, like, so it's gamified as well. They get pairs, these like prize points in pairs, if they're using less energy, if they're saving energy. And the cool thing is, is that these pairs, and I assume that in Dutch as well, there's the, uh, uh, the, the, the word for light bulb is also a pair, right? Yes. Okay. Uh huh. So. <laughs> the plot thickens. Right. So then, <laughs> right. So there's an integration with, with Sugar CRM to track the, who they are, and then they have all these points, but you can take these virtual bulbs and you can trade them in at a shop for real things, which is cool. So it's like a super incentivization for people to think about the environment. And I love this concept and I love this site and I'm sure I gave it a good grade. And <laughs> this was nominated because this is a great example of how Drupal can be used as a presentation layer over large amounts of data obtained and integrated from external systems. Thank you, Le Monde Rune. DHL parcel by Wanshu. Michelle is not here, is he? Okay, so Wanshu did the DHL parcel um, sh uh, website here. So Deutsche Post bought DHL, and they bought this. Subs they bought this company called Selectfracht, and <laughs> Selectfracht has online stores. And there's this other old property called DHL for you, and they had this big integration. And then essentially, um, what happened is they integrated all these services into this new single platform. And this was nominated because, in terms of how much difference a website can make to real people's businesses and bottom lines, uh, the unique visitors to this website compared to the old website jumped by more than 100% within months of the launch without any other form of marketing. So. Very super well done from one shoe. <laughs> so, dataoverheid.nl by Sogeti. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> open data is super cool. And uh, every time I talk about, every time I talk about open data with government audiences, talk about the new DCAN Drupal distribution. Who knows about DCAN? Yeah, it is super awesome. Who knows what CCAN is? Okay, so you guys are the open data geeks, apparently. Um, open data is really important, and we talk about open data a lot when we talk to governments because you can say things like, so I, I have this slide, and it's, it's a giant iceberg, and it's the whole iceberg, right? And there's a little tip sticking out of the water, and then there's all this stuff under the water. And we say, hey, look, you as a government, you have all of this data, right? And the top outside of the water, that represents... Uh, the part that's machine readable, digital, available online somehow, right? But you have all this data and it's not doing anything and you can create literally, you know, billions of dollars of value out of thin air simply by opening it up and letting other people use it. So a great example that I always like to use, and there are lots of really good examples of, of what open data can do to benefit the population and, to in, and frankly uh, to, um, to create new businesses. Uh, the uh, company Blink Reaction in New Jersey made an open data portal for the Metropolitan Transit Authority, which is the New York City public transit uh, company. They made an open data portal that lets anybody pull in the situation in the, in the trains and the buses and everything that's going on. There are 77 apps built using that open data, right? So that's like, what is that? Maybe 100 families can pay their rent, can eat and everything, just from data that's already floating around, that the departments already have. So it's an incredibly powerful tool. The standard for open data in a lot of ways it has been this thing called CCAN, which is written in Python. It's a standalone open, standalone open data thing. Um, but even better, and when you're thinking about this and pitching anybody, go look for DCAN, D-K-A-N. It is a feature for feature 
match. It's built in Drupal. It's a Drupal open data portal, but because it's in Drupal, it does everything else that Drupal does. You can integrate it, you can build, you know, make views, you can do mapping, all the Drupal stuff that you already know, combine it with open data, it's VCAN, it's super cool. So I'm really into this theme. <coughs> <laughs> so <laughs> data overhead dot NL, this is the uh, Dutch open data portal, and it provides information about public uh, government data, national registry open data, with references to open data sets in government organizations. And this was nominated because it's part of the Open Government Action Plan here in the Netherlands. Thank you, Sogeti. <laughs> 3D hubs built by 3D hubs is pretty cool. It says here, at 3D hubs, we believe everyone should have easy access to 3D printing. We do this by connecting people who want to print to the people owning the machines. We provide over 1 billion people access to a 3D printer within 10 miles of their home. That's 10% of the world's population. For this project, we're using Drupal because it allows us to quickly deliver new features and maintain a stable platform. Those are great reasons to use Drupal. And this was nominated because it's Europe's largest collaborative 3D production platform and uh, they just announced a 4.5 million euro funding round. Awesome, 3D hubs. <laughs> And they won! Yay! And they're here! Woo um, oh, was that overhead? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. So, so how did you get into so the maker thing, right? Yeah. That's like yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's the hipster cool. So, <laughs> how many people? How many people are um? What what are the sort of things that people are doing now with with the three D printer? Everything, but uh, especially like it, it really helps uh, for architects. For instance, it's really helpful for them for uh, making models and everyone that has a concept or an idea of an object that can help someone else uh, yeah, develop their product. It's, um, yeah, it's a tool that is helping them to get a prototype and, uh, and uh, yeah, get them out on the wild. And, uh, right. this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a concept that's allowing, that's allowing a, a, a much broader spectrum of people to, to innovate and, and, and you know, change the physical yeah, products we exactly, use, right? Exactly. So how did you choose Drupal to do? So we have been we have been with Drupal since the beginning, and it's uh, I, I think it's probably one of the most customized uh, Drupal commerce installations because it's really like uh, when someone uploads a model, an STL file, and that is a three D model, and then they can see uh, what will what it will cost in every uh, yeah in every hub that they have nearby. Uh -huh. So it's uh, it's crazy. It's oh wait, so that's ca that's calculated in real time? Yeah. And yeah, as, yeah. A, as a as a using solar, but uh, okay. And as yeah. a printer owner, I can specify my own pricing as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. You wow. can set you can set up your startup cost and then the cost per cubic centimeter, yeah. and then uh, mm -hmm. yeah, using that we can show like a, an estimate of, of what we it will cost in each location, and then uh, yeah, if you you can choose whatever a nearby printer because we have already like a near ten thousand printers uh, worldwide. And uh, yeah, you can choose the printer near you and uh, yeah, then just go for it. And it's a really, really interesting uh, platform to work with. That is so cool. It's yes. really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Really thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please somebody buy me a beer. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're free. <laughs> Please somebody buy me a free beer. So it has a, the beer has a licensing cost of zero. Yes. Right, but we still have to talk about design costs, bandwidth, you know, it needs Updates. Those. Exactly, exactly. So, we have a break for? Oh, wow. One beer. They're not <laughs> listening anyway. Nobody's listening to us. Nobody's listening to One me. beer, yes. yes. <laughs> right, so, everybody back in here in 10, ten minutes. Yes.